Two friends go into the woods bow hunting for deer. One of them comes out with an arrow through his arm. The other friend says it was just an accident. Gorin says she was rolling down her window to make her order when a man popped up and demanded money. Busy night for police and emergency responders. Let's get right into it. We had several reports here to tell you about. Well, you hear train accident and you think the absolute worst, but the good news is we've been told nobody's hurt and the traffic so far is not an issue. It's been cleaned up here, but I mean, look at this. The picture tells you everything. But the case is raising an important question. How far is that gap between someone who looks at child pornography and someone who goes on to physically harm children? He's very willing to help. In fact, let me call him over, sir. You mentioned she has friends. Are they, are they nearby? Yes, they were. They were it, we, the friends we know of are in this, in this complex only. Okay, so they're within walking distance. Yes. Workers here at Ronnie's Tire say they've never had a disgruntled customer quite like this. According to police, a customer here on Saturday got so upset, she chased workers with a butcher knife and a metal pipe like this one. Next thing I know, it just something snapped in. Kenneth Chapman says he wasn't rude. He wasn't disrespectful. He was just trying to talk to Paulette Martino about her rims. She asked for my name. I stuck my head around the corner. That's when she came at me with the butcher knife. Police say the 45-year-old admitted to using a knife to try and get her money back. Her arrest report says she drove to the tire shop on North Main Street with her father when you saw the and then chased around scared. a very scared 23-year-old. You know, I'm a big fella. I don't get scared like that, but I was scared about that knife. It was that long. It was a, it looked like she was going to treat me like a turkey. Chapman says he did whatever he could to get away from the suspect with the butcher knife until he got into a corner and did the only thing he could, which is jump up on the roof. When she came back to the car, I went like this here, like this here. And she said, come on down here, you such a man. You such a man, but I'm not coming down there with no knife. Police say when her father took away the knife, Martino picked up a pipe. She grabs the breaker bar inside and she's swinging it like this running through the shop i ran back out this side he said call 911 i dialed 911 i just don't like to see nobody in jail especially if it could have been avoided you know if it, if she didn't have to come at me like that martino's bond was set at one hundred fifty thousand dollars. her jeep grand cherokee continues to sit here in the parking lot of ronnie's tires jason law channel 4 the local station when you go for a ride along in Nassau County, you're asked to sign off on a packet of policies and guidelines. Now, that night when you go out for the ride, it's up to the deputy's discretion as to whether you can even get out of the car during a traffic stop. Well, this decision two months ago to let the civilian ride along out of the car has one Nassau County family thinking that it led, may have led, to the death of 39-year-old Ray Bodden. The man in the middle of your screen, wearing a white t-shirt and holding a flashlight, is not a police officer. His name is David Bright. He was hired to be a corrections officer the day before this video was taken, on September 11th. A state attorney's report says 39-year-old Ray Bodden died after Deputy Ernie Cole mistook a rolled-up bag of marijuana for a gun. Bodden's brother, Chuck DeYoung, says he can live with the deputy's actions. But he wants to know why David Bright, a civilian ride-along, was allowed to get involved in a traffic stop. It frustrates me and it makes me even matter when I think about it. The sheriff's office ride-along guidelines say observers have no law enforcement authority. Observers shall not interfere with any police officer performing his or her duty. And it is the host deputy's decision as to whether or not the observers will be allowed to exit the car. Bodden's family believes when Bright stepped out of the police car, his actions set off a chain of events that resulted in Bodden's death. If David Bright hadn't have been over there with that flashlight shining on that plastic bag that he had in his hand and following him around, walking around behind him, Ray would have never turned around. Ray would have been facing the officer. But Sheriff Tommy Seagrave says Bright didn't break any of the rules and didn't involve himself in the traffic stop. He didn't get involved. He was just simply there as a witness. Okay, so there was no pilot policy violation uh, as far as him getting no, out of the car and no, sir. with the flashlight? Okay. No, sir. The whole and the whole incident has nothing to do with the ride-along. 
Channel 4's Jason Law talked with him and joins us live with more on this waving ministry. Kind of catchy, huh, Jace? Yeah, it actually works. I'm getting some good reactions here at the airport. I, I, it's a good workout, too. You do this for four or five hours, your shoulder gets pretty tired. I saw this guy. I drove by him a couple times on 95 going northbound. He had a sign up. And I drove by him, and I said, I have to do a story on this. i got to figure out why this guy stands out here in the cold and does this. Found out about it, and it's actually part of his ministry, and he takes it all over the country. How many thousands of cars do you think pass under this walkway on 95 every day? Yeah! Woo! Paul Kulos is trying to reach every one of them with a sign and a wave. Dude. Yeah! Did you hear that? <laughs> Pillows gets a real kick out of doing this. It's become part of his life. A ministry he created three years ago based on waving to strangers. You remember the Dave Matthews Band video where the guy goes around hugging people for three minutes? It's kind of like that. Waving is his philosophy. Pillows has taken his church all over the country. And then it just built. It's like I got this huge freeway church. Reaction, lots of beats, waves, love, uh, not much negative. I've only got like five negative. This is the Bible Belt. Seattle is like, but hey, I get a, no, I get a lot of love in Seattle too. Get a few more birds in Seattle. <laughs> Grant Swindle became interested after he heard Quillos talking at a celebration church. He's telling me about this sign ministry that he has. Yeah. And I could just sense in his voice the passion this guy's got for this. So I had to come check it out. Good morning, everybody. We'll have that in just a couple minutes. But first, of course, it's Saturday morning. It's the start to your weekend. You want to know how it's looking outside. And we got Rebecca here to tell you. And on to an international developing story that is connected to a Florida church. The Taliban says they are not behind a deadly attack at a U.N. compound in Afghanistan. The Taliban sent a text message to the Associated Press this morning denying its responsibility. Four U.N. guards and three other workers died in the attacks. The attack happened during the violent protest over the recent burning of the Quran at a Gainesville church. Pastor Terry Jones and his church are the ones behind the burning of the Islamic Bible. Jones is offering no apologies for the burning that is blamed for sparking the deadly protest. Channel 4 Scott Johnson went to Gainesville to speak to the pastor. Well, more bad news in Japan. Nuclear officials say highly radioactive water is now leaking from a damaged nuclear plant in the Pacific Ocean. They say the air above the leak contains extremely high levels of radioactivity, enough to cause a cancer risk. The plant has been spewing radioactivity since it was hit by the tsunami three weeks ago. Well, in lighter news, right now people in Orange Park are getting ready to get some free dental care. Last night, dozens of people camped outside the dentist place on Wells Road. The free exams are only for the first 100 people there. So if you want to try and head on over, the dentist placed is at 1695 Wells Road in Orange Park. The exams started at 7 o'clock this morning, so just a few minutes ago. They're going to be, again, only available for the first 100 or so people to show up. For more information, head to newsfortax.com and look under Scene on 4. And now to a neighborhood crime alert over in Union County. That's where several law enforcement agencies raided a suspected animal fighting ring close to Lake Butler. Officials snapped several photos of the scene. It was a tip, they say, that led agents to the Lake Butler home. In total, we're told 24 dogs and an estimated 100 game fowl fighting cocks were seized. The National Weather Service announced this morning that nine twisters tore through the Tampa Bay region on Thursday. This is video of some of the damage. As many as 18,000 residents remain without power in the area. The Weather Service says the tornado struck Polk and Hillsborough counties, among others. Pretty wild video down there. Fortunately, we didn't see anything quite like that up here. Good morning, everybody. 714. It, does that look wet to you? A little it damp? It appear that way, but it is not. Okay. <laughs> Well, Objects many... may be more damp than they appear. <laughs> Either way, it looks misty out there on US 17 and uh, the exit ramp off of I-10. Not many cars out there. Of course, it is a beautiful Saturday morning, so hopefully maybe you're sleeping in this morning and enjoying us here on the morning show because we're having a good time. Rebecca will have your full forecast again coming up in just a few minutes. All right, in the news now, we now know why a Southwest Airlines flight had to make an emergency landing in Yuma, Arizona. 
The National Transportation Safety Board says it was because of an in-flight fuselage rupture. That sounds pretty scary. Well, here's some video actually shot by a passenger after the plane touched down at a military base in Arizona. 80 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour and it's on, on a dirt. lawnmower. Wouldn't you think lawnmower racing would be on grass? Not if you're going 80 miles an hour. Well, you'd be cutting grass, though. Wouldn't that be... That would be more productive. And I don't want to have to turn on a lawnmower. <laughs> going 80. Going 80. <laughs> Surely they take the blades off. That is very scary. Hey, Mickey, uh, Mickey Mouse is getting a makeover. Coming up, we take a bird's eye view of Disney and how a new paint job is helping out the environment.